state. And there's so much I could say about this topic, but I'm going to start here. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed by God's command so that what is seen was not what was made out of what was visible. Verse 7, that by faith, right? By faith, Noah, when warned about things not seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. And so while there's so much I could say, I talked a little bit before about when I flew off a 300-foot cliff. Sure, I was 27 years old when I flew off that cliff. And when I flew off the cliff, I talked about how I knew that I was either going to be okay or I was going to go to heaven because God had good, good plans for me. And I believe that because it's a promise in the Bible. And, you know, many things have happened just like this where I can draw on those experiences and it has built my faith up to this point. And I just want to hit a little bit on that for you today. I just want to make this video and talk about faith in a way that, you know, maybe resonates for you and can encourage you and maybe prompt the, the building of faith in those first steps. Maybe it's just a seed that someone else will water later. So um, all these things kind of through my life have, have accumulated and added to my faith and I just want to give you a couple scriptures and encourage you to just develop your faith um, and and or to have your faith developed by the Lord in you know doing a couple things that kind of um, welcome that if you will so you know our faith is a blessing and it comes from the Lord it doesn't come from us we can't manufacture it or create it it, it comes from the Lord. And it also says in the Bible that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of the Lord, that is. So this should just serve to um, encourage you a little bit and um, just maybe convince you to um, grow your faith a little by asking God to grow it and just dive into that Bible and read a little bit. So here's the thing. God gives us so many examples to draw on for faith, okay? And we choose whether to doubt and control or whether we want to lean on him, to press in, you know, um, for his promises. And things don't go how we expect them to go. They don't go how we want them to, how, how we plan. There seems to be, you know, no reason for what we go through. And so I just want to tell you that God and his infinite wisdom he knows he has it all planned out and worked out for good okay for his good for your good and for the good of others so um, jeremiah 29 11 says i know the plans i have for you to prosper you not to harm you to give you a hope and a future these are good plans in romans 8 28 it says and we know that by all that all things God works for good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And so you can rely on your own understanding or what you already know about the world or, you know, know to be true, or you can um, rely on his promises, things you, that, in you know, as you grow in Christ, you'll know the promises are things that you know to be true. So, for example, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. And I think that's so important because a lot of times, you know, even in my life right now, like I might not understand what's going on, but it, I don't have to understand what's going on to have faith. I can draw on all the experiences I've had prior and up to this point and know that regardless of <laughs> zero um, knowledge of what's going to happen in the future, that's pretty shaky. Um <laughs> Um, I, I think it's okay because, you know what, the the hardest times you have are the times that you can grow closest to the Lord and you learn a lot and you grow. Over time, you learn to trust Him, you learn His ways and you know how He is towards you and that He loves you and He's not going to harm you and so you end up trusting Him. I just encourage you to allow that in your life, that kind of trust because it's it gives you joy in the midst of suffering or in the midst of trials or confusion about what's going on. 
Um, I'm just going to read a couple more verses and, and wrap up here. I just kind of wanted to get this done. It says in the Bible that we've, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If someone's gift is prophecy, let him use it, use it in proportion to his faith, for example. And so I just want to say that there's different spiritual gifts and um, discernment or, or knowledge of the Bible is one of them and faith is another. And, um, you know, we're all given faith and it's not so that we can boast, right? We're given a measure of faith, it says. You know, the, the more and more I talk with people and counsel people, even strangers on faith, it becomes so blatantly obvious to me that it's something I've just had, like what I was saying about since middle school, and faith comes by hearing the word. And so it says Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is from the gift of God, not by works, so that no man can boast. You know, so if we trust in God and we let him control things instead of trying to control it and just, you know, work so hard and try so hard to get it under control, we just give it to God and we do what we're supposed to do. We're not just sitting back doing nothing, but so that sometimes we are. We're waiting upon the Lord. But when we do that, God is able to say, okay, you gave it to me. I I have the power to control this, and I can give you the same power that resides in Jesus Christ. The same power that was in him is in you because you're adopted in this family. And, you know, those who wait on the Lord are renewed. Their strength is renewed. Their faith is renewed. And, you know, they can withstand the fire, and they're strengthened. With him, we can handle all things, and it's never more than we can bear. But, again, we choose this, and choice is the key here. So you can choose to make it through the fire and, you know, struggle or, you know, just try as hard as you can or risk failure. And you might even succeed but be worn out. But if you choose to go through some through something with him, trusting him, he gives us that power. He gives us the, us the strength, the same power. That Sometimes he blesses others through your pain. So even, even if you don't understand why you're going through something, and maybe you never will, usually you'll see kind of after the fact, sometimes during, a lot of times after, and once in a while never. But it's because he works things to the good of all those who love him, not just you who loves him. So you have this faith, and you trust that he has your good in mind and everyone's good in mind. And sometimes he uses the hardest thing in your pain to bless someone else. Hang on for the ride because ultimately it leads somewhere amazing. It's the thing that other people want. It's the way that you share Jesus in a way that compares to nothing else. All things are founded on solid ground when we trust in Jesus. And God is our good, good Father. And Jesus is the way to God. He is my comforter, my redeemer, my savior, my counselor. He's my guide and he's my very best friend. And so for that kind of faith, I am extremely thankful and I am very hopeful that you'll find that faith too. Thanks for watching.